We have, in the past, covered the astonishing discovery solely made by Dr. Sam Osmanagat within Bosnia, long thought to have merely been a hill, completely overgrown and neglected, with many locals even building upon and farming its inclines. Dr. Osmanagat, however, after studying the geology of the area, realized the reason for precise angles of this supposed natural formation eventually confirming that it was, indeed, an enormous ancient pyramid. One that, after long, arduous research, has been found to rival even those of Giza. Indeed, even its plateau, especially if one takes into consideration the following exposé. Regardless of constant mockery, objections, resistance, and dismissal he has predictably experienced from mainstream-funded academia, Dr. Osmanagat has not only unearthed vast portions of this ancient structure, proving beyond doubt that it was indeed an ancient pyramid, but has also successfully penetrated its inner sanctum, along with many other highly intriguing ancient sites located within the local vicinity. All littered with stones that seemingly give off resonance frequencies that are not only being ignored by mainstream scientists, but baffling all those who valiantly decide to explore their features. Yet, thanks to Jock and Sam's continued efforts, our understandings of the incomprehensible, astonishingly true scale of this site has increased dramatically, and indeed the feat that whoever built it went through in constructing the site, truly unbelievable. Jock spent 16 months as official videographer for the Archaeological Park Foundation, a Bosnian NGO non-profit organization created by Dr. Sam Osmanagat, during which, and thanks to the considerable effort of hundreds of volunteers who since 2010 have been involved in the backbreaking excavations of the site, clearing many tons of rock and earth from the area, including the Ravni tunnels, such tunnels are apparently widely known locally for their healing powers, which, upon investigation, Many alternative investigators have recorded unusual bioelectromagnetic energy levels within. Yet, Jock and Sam's most recent personal discoveries is the connection of these tunnels, located a fair distance from the pyramid itself, interwoven with all the local ancient sites, a result clearly intended by the past intelligence responsible for their creation. These tunnels backfilled 4,600 years ago for reasons that many have postulated, was done to avoid further degeneration of the original civilization's work. Thus, we're clearly a conservation effort that, just like I have postulated on several other videos, are the purpose for the casing stones, which can still be found upon the Great Pyramids, were done by groups who clearly revered these sites. Furthermore, regardless of this connection of tunnels, Jock and Samir have also realized, thanks to these contributory excavation efforts, something truly astonishing regarding not only the Bosnian pyramid, but the entire surrounding area, which, just like the pyramid, were long presumed to have been merely a natural geological landscape. However, all of the curious sites that have been found dotting the surrounding area were not only undeniably man-made, but that the entire landscape was actually once carved out by hand or possibly machine. With the river Fonica, which runs through the entire site, masterfully designed to permanently remain placid, also man-made, and due to the fossilized stonework found, enabling this water's manipulation, according to Jock, indicates it could have possibly been completed millions instead of thousands of years ago successfully creating a river which gently meanders through the site. Who built the Bosnian Plateau? Who had such tremendous earth-moving and water manipulation capabilities, seemingly many hundreds of thousands or possibly millions of years ago? As the investigations within the area continue, it is slowly growing into one of the most enormous, most compelling areas of evidence of ancient advanced lost civilization to be found anywhere on Earth. Thank you very much to Jock 
for bringing all this astonishing information to light, furthering all of our understandings of their past capabilities. And as the research grows, so does the compounding proof of these past, highly capable civilizations. We will, of course, keep you posted through our connections, a place that is undoubtedly highly compelling. If you enjoy our content, if you think our battle worthy, please help us to continue our voyage of discovery in unraveling the mysteries of history. Links to donate can be found within the description. Without you, we cannot survive. Thank you. Tibet, the roof of our world. Words do no justice to the untouched beauty of this far corner of Earth. A vast, mysterious, and sacred place, embraced and protected by miles of immovable mountains. Monasteries, built many hundreds, sometimes thousands of years ago, stand in defiance of the elements, precariously placed among the clouds. Many of these very ancient structures are said to have been built on the remnants of once even grander ancient buildings, structures many religions attribute to the gods. Among the seemingly endless mountain ranges lay one mountain which is different, one which is special. It is believed by most of Tibet, and even further afield, that the god Shiva lay buried within this sacred mountain. According to ancient beliefs, this enigmatic Tibetan mountain represents the axis of the world, the stairway to heaven. In many eastern countries, Mount Kailash is considered the holiest place on earth. Some ancient sources even suggesting it is where one could find the mysterious city of the gods. It is indeed regarded within the climbing world as unascendable. A route has never been located and probably never will. Few have been brave enough to even go near this place in the past century. There may be some profound reasoning behind these ancient clusters of human beings, regarding this particular mountain over all others as sacred and as the resting place of a god. There may, however, be ulterior motives at play when it comes to the discouragement of climbers in attempting the peak. A team of Russian scientists, intrigued by the history and a possible suppression of its true nature, have suggested after covert explorations that the top of Mount Kailash is not a natural formation. It is actually the remnants of a giant man-made pyramid of great antiquity. Just how old this pyramid could be currently remains unclear. What also remains unclear is if the entire mountain is a man-made pyramid, disguised by the erosion of many millennia. The research team claimed, quote, The stratum is horizontal with the layers of stone slightly varying in color. The dividing lines show up clear and distinct, which gives the entire mountain the facade of having been built by giant hands of huge blocks of reddish stone." End quote. A mysterious claim put forward in regards to the mountain concerns rapid aging when in the area. After spending 12 hours in the region, the length of nails and hair was equal to two weeks of normal growth in some cases. Several mystics have said that the mountain has a secret entrance within it, leading to the legendary kingdom of Shambhala. Legend also states that when the ice on its peak finally melts, it will reveal the eye. Professor Ernst Muldashev, PhD, a doctor and explorer who traveled to Tibet extensively, said later in his life, quote, There are two underground countries, the Shambhala and Agartha which are each part of the gene pool of humanity and civilization. Information provided by the Thule Society shows there is a higher civilization coming from the Himalayas and divided into two branches, the Shambhala and Agartha, the former being the center of power protected by unknown forces and energy." End quote. An understanding of what sort of pyramid Kailash could be, or indeed just how special it is, may take several years to establish. I will, of course, keep you posted. Pangbochi is a tiny, isolated village, high up within the mountains of Nepal. Resting at an altitude of 13,000 feet, it is located deep within the Himalayas. This tiny place is renowned for producing world-class Sherpas 
and is mostly inhabited by the Sangder Sherpa. Many putting this phenomena down to the extremely inhospitable climates that people from the village are exposed to from a very young age. It is also the home of an ancient monastery whose resident monks seem at home, completely isolated from the rest of mankind, above the clouds, on top of the mountains. Countless lost and extremely lucky souls have been lured to this place during the vicious blizzards which consumed the mountains, saved only by the sound of the monk's ceremonial horns. If the Yeti does indeed exist, then these surrounding mountain ranges, all but forgotten by the outside world, would undoubtedly be a suitable home for extremely elusive beasts. And if a population of human beings were ever to encounter such an animal, it would have to be the monks of such monasteries dotted within these inhospitable and completely isolated mountain ranges. Once one discovers that the majority of such populations not only believe in such creatures, but often claim to have witnessed them, the events that follow become all the more of an intriguing reality. Not only do some of these groups of devout and very long-running lines of monks claim to have seen them, but many stories are attached to such events. Some, the Pangbochi Monastery in particular, actually claim to be in possession of the physical remains of this creature. Peter Byrne, funded by an extremely wealthy oil tycoon by the name of Tom Slick, would find these remains high within the mountains that the monks had kept with them for many years as a ritual artifact, a part of their ceremonies day by day. Known as the Pangbochi Hand, Byrne had no idea what to expect. Imagine his surprise when the monks produced what appeared to be an authentic yeti's hand and a complete scalp. According to the monks, many years prior, one of their brothers had walked into a cave to meditate. There, he saw a yeti. He returned many years later to find that the yeti was dead. He collected a hand and the scalp and took it back to the monastery where it remained. Astounded by the artifacts, Byrne requested they let him take them away for further study. Unfortunately, the monks refused, claiming the remains were too highly valued by the monastery. Unperturbed and determined to come away from there with some sort of hard evidence, in a shocking move, Peter Burns stole sections of the hand bone from the monks, replacing them with human bone. Byrne then smuggled the bones out of Nepal and into India where actor James Stewart allegedly smuggled the hand bones out of the country in his luggage to England. Once at the London University, primatologist William Charles Osman Hill conducted a physical examination of the pieces that Byrne supplied. His first findings were that it was a hominid, and later, in 1960, he decided that the Pangbochi fragments were a closer match to a Neanderthal, but not an exact match. In 1991, in conjunction with Lauren Coleman's research, it was discovered that the Slick Expedition consultant, an American anthropologist by the name of George Agagino, had retained other samples of the Pangbochi hand kept from the original theft. The NBC program Unsolved Mysteries obtained samples and determined they were similar to human tissue, but were not human, and could only verify they were near human. Shortly thereafter, most likely due to confirmation via forensic testing of the artifact's authenticity. The entire hand and scalp was stolen from the Pangbachi Monastery, in a military precision-style operation. Rumors regarding the items reportedly disappearing into a private collection via the illegal underground in the sale of antiquities would circulate, yet they have never been seen again. George Agagino, before his death on September 11, 2000, transferred his secret research upon the Pangochi Yeti hand to Lauren Coleman. In 2010, Weta Workshops, who did the models for the Lord of the Rings movies, kindly produced a replica skull and hand based on photos of the missing hand and skull. Mike Alsop handed over the replica skull and hand to monks at Pangbochi in May 2011. They seemed to be very pleased to have their artifacts back. Let's just hope no one tells them.